Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome on stage Mr. Scott Burroughs. So here's the thing. I've learned in my own life that you can have the most thought-provoking vision for your life as a company that is safety-driven and a mindset of a world champion that revolves around poise and execution, but it takes grit to build and sustain a world-class safety organization. It takes grit to remember to wear your seatbelt and to encourage others to do so. But what is grit? It has a lot to do with your willingness to discipline yourself and your frontline employees, your truckers, to discipline yourself each and every day when you show up to work to persevere, to be resilient in your pursuit when it comes to meeting your business, short and long-term goals as well as your safety goals, and especially when all else beckons you to give in, quit, or even worse, maintain the status quo. That particular night, Ed was driving fast on one dark road with no oncoming traffic. And then he lost control of the wheel of that car. He yelled back at me, Scott, Scott, put your seatbelt on. He crashed into a mound of sand, literally sent his car hurling into the air before tumbling back to earth, end of her end. It was in that one defining moment that everything about my life would change. Now, the next time I came to, I was in the emergency room. Questions were being asked. Can you move your arms? And can you even feel us touching your toes? And my answer was either no or I'm not really quite sure. And then out of nowhere, I felt the most unimaginable excruciating pain coming from both sides of my head, real close to my temples. What I didn't realize was this. My doctors were now placing me in a spinal traction which consisted of them screwing two metal bolts, steel screws, right here into my skull. And my vision began to darken. And I thought to myself, my God, this is it. I'm gonna die, and all I could do is pray to God for a second chance in life. Like you, I work for a company like Basic Energy Services that cared about its people, their safety, and the safety of others. Four years before I went to college, I worked for my dad, golf course superintendent at Turtle Creek Country Club. I drove the trucks and other heavy equipment. I was around hazardous fertilizers and chemicals. And, we, and because of that, like Turtle Creek and Basic Energy Services, they do a very good job of educating and re-educating you, the front line and your truckers, each and every day on the importance of safety. Paying attention to safety uh, procedures, protocols, and measures and why wearing your protective gear, your personal protective gear, in your case, steel toe boots, fire resistant clothing, gloves, protective eye gear, hard hat. But even so, even though I had the safety knowledge, even though it was drilled into me and I had a create safety mindset, if you will, I still made a poor decision for whatever reason distraction, call what you will. I made a poor decision not to wear my seatbelt that night. And that split second decision that night when Ed lost control of the wheel of his car left me paralyzed from my chest down and diagnosed a quadriplegic. When I first started pushing a wheelchair, that's when one of my doctors, though, pulled me over. And he goes, Scott, look, you need to understand the seriousness of your spinal cord injury and come to realize that the movement that you're getting back in your arms is as good as it's gonna get. What I heard was, you might as well go ahead right now and give up hope. Give up hope on the idea you'll ever come out of this chair. And that's when I made the profound decision that I was willing to fail, but I was unwilling to quit. It's a mindset that can define you as an individual, as a team, as an industry leader, don't ever let your competition or 
someone else's beliefs paralyze you from achieving those things you believe in your mind that you just might be able to achieve. The next time you're knocked down, don't let your mindset become your biggest handicap. How? One way that I've learned is by asking better questions. As a first degree black belt in Pai Lum Kung Fu, the martial arts teaches you never to lose the ability to play the part of being a student. A student of your industry, your craft. A student of the Department of Transportation. A student of safety leadership. And they also encourage you to ask questions like, what don't I know? What am I missing? And what can I practice next? You quickly begin to realize that these what questions open your mind to seeing life as well as your challenges from an entirely different perspective. And I only share that with you because can you guess the first question I asked myself when I laid there flat on my back, paralyzed from my chest down? Anyone? Anyone? What do you think was the first question I asked myself? Why? Why me? Right. Why does the accident have to happen? Why did Ed have to lose control of his car? Why did I have to become paralyzed from my chest down? Why does life have to be this difficult? I can go on and on. Think about some what questions that you can formulate right now as a team that can entice you and your frontline employees, your truckers, to inspire them to take safety seriously. Questions like, what can I do right now to engage my team of truckers, to make sure they follow safety protocols. What can I do today to truly set the example as a manager, knowing the most minor of accidents can have a devastating impact on you, them, and their families. And what I love about the what questions, they can become part of your safety toolkit and they keep you moving forward, friends, into your future. Now take a look around the room. Notice what just transpired. A moment ago, you were all independent of each other. But now you've come together as one, as a team. And that, my friends, is where there is strength in your grip and the grip of a company like Basic Energy Services. When you are willing to come together as a team, it's easier to collaborate, to brainstorm, and exchange ideas on what you can learn from each other out there in the field as you talk about best safety practices and perhaps new and different ways to engage your front line, your truck driver, to make sure that they pay attention to the personal protection equipment. My ability to grip on to something, even a, a fork and a pencil, impacted my life. How could gripping on to a new idea, a new concept, gripping on the basic energy services, safety, strategies, and tactics, impact your life, your safety, the safety of others, as well as your truckers. Look, it took me decades to strengthen my grip, but if you are truly serious about safety, your grip begins today because when your grip strengthens as a team, as a company, you hold each other accountable. And when you hold each other accountable, you give yourself the increased odds of making it home tonight to your loved ones as opposed to making a poor split-second decision and being involved in an accident where you were injured, bumps and bruises, maybe you lost a finger, and you go home in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. Your grip is one thing that can make a difference in your life and the life of others heading well in the 21st century. Okay, you now can release your grip.